Welcome to the Salt Circle Podcast. My name is Hank. With me is Ben. Yeah. We're uh we're keeping it classy this week. Yeah. The yeah. honest and true Ben. Very honest. <laughs> so, so honest. So honest. Just so honest. So yeah, we're di- we're diving into a Shakespeare play. We're talking Othello this week. So, yeah. How do you pronounce the main villain's name? I'm curious. Yag- Yago? Yago? Okay. Yago. Our, uh, well, my professor for my Shakespeare class was always on the fence about the pronunciation. Like, some days it'd be Yago, some days it'd be Iago. Mm hmm. I don't know. Just curious. It always looks like an L to me, anyways, so that's great. <laughs> Lago. Lago. <laughs> The, the top number one villain on Othello, which is a, a play that takes place entirely on a boat, if you only read, like, the first <laughs> couple of words in the, in the thing. I'm just... Uh, man, at some point, like, you know, they were going to the island to fight the Turks. Uh-huh. And I just assume they never, like, I you know, it's class and it's Shakespeare, and this was, like, before... Yeah, I, like broke through that barrier and actually enjoyed it. So I'm like, mm-hmm. all right, they're traveling somewhere, probably by boat. That makes sense. So it was just on a boat. I skipped the part where they got there and then came back. <laughs> you know, it mostly made sense, except for the couple of times when someone was standing outside of someone else's window. But you will overlook it. You know, it's a big boat. It's a it's a big a boat, large man. vessel. Yeah, they're not on a boat. They're not. It makes it funnily like, enough. Yeah, it's wild. Where do but we even? Yeah. Uh, where do we start? Are we gonna butcher the plot of this one again? I guess. <laughs> I mean, okay. Here's the plot of Othello, dude convinces his boss that his wife slept with him and then his boss kills his wife and then everybody else kills dies himself. too. Yeah. It's Romeo it's okay, it's Romeo and Juliet with extra steps. Essentially <laughs> the same story. They're all Romeo. What if and Juliet? Romeo killed Juliet? <laughs> I mean he did in a way. It's his fault. Indirectly. I mean, it's a lot of people's fault, that one. <laughs> there were, yeah, yeah. There were a lot of things that, you know, how many people did this have to pass before we ended up here? Yeah, this one is mostly Yago's fault. Othello yeah. could have handled the situation a little better, he though. He definitely, you know, for them calling him, like, I think it's Ludovico or whatever when he shows up. Ludovico? Ludovico? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. he's like... How could this be the cool and level-headed Othello that I used to know? And it's like, well, you know, if he was cool and level-headed, would he be doing this right now? <laughs> Can't have been that great at, you know, keeping calm. Because he really just... I don't know. I guess Iago is still, like, you know, he's putting the moves on him. But it did not take a lot of convincing. It did not. <laughs> it did not at all. Also, the, like... He turns from literally, like, throwing the handkerchief on the ground without looking at it to this handkerchief is, like, the most important thing in my life. Yeah. And the world. That, that, <laughs> it's... He call, I think he calls it magic at some point, doesn't he? Or, like, yeah. it implies... Yeah, it has powers mm-hmm. or something. I don't know. It was an heirloom, yeah. but, you know. And he, before he was like, yeah, this is a small handkerchief. Fuck this thing. Way too small. Yeah. And then, uh, I don't know. The whole thing with with Cassio seems a little bit, uh, not, not, not forced, certainly. Um, I don't know. It's just like, oh, the guy got drunk once. He has a serious problem, and we shouldn't let him be in charge of anything. Like setting Cassio up or whatever, getting them all. Mm-hmm. I don't know. He got in a fight. I guess. 
Yeah, I don't know. This play turns on some pretty minor things, I'll say. There's yeah, there's a lot of stuff that gets really blown up. <laughs> and it's it's, it's, a, it's a little there's a little melodrama going on here. I mean, they're all tired and exhausted and just sick of not having been on land for months. They're on this <laughs> boat. <laughs> they're all unhappy. I mean, I guess they it's were cramped. fighting a war. Yeah, so that does, stuff that, is probably stressful. You know, makes people a little more irritable and more likely to murder people, probably. You know. Yeah, I, yeah, you know, way more likely to murder. Yes. From increase, what is from what is a chance yeah, of from, killing another human? <laughs> from what is apparently like a default base of like maybe I'll do it today to I'm definitely gonna do it today. <laughs> it's not really. <laughs> She even asks him, can you you just kill me tomorrow? At least. At least. He's like, nah. Nah. Yeah, I mean, it's almost like there's a lot of... It's like like a Shakespearean chick flick. There's a lot of stuff that could have been resolved if people would have just stopped for like 40 seconds and let another person talk. (laughs) I mean, that's classic tragedy stuff, though. Of characters just not... Look, the was point it? is it was easily avoid. The tragedy is supposed to be easily avoidable. It's not like this is a thing that was super destined and had to happen. You like even when it's talked about that way, it's usually w- could have been avoided. Except people are are who they are and arrogant and stuff. Yeah, I I don't know. I guess I'm thinking like with King Lear, that one wasn't mm-hmm. as chick flicky. I don't think there was instances of like. If you just listened to this person, it all would have. Been I mean, that fine. was more. King Lear was. Yeah, he was pretty a dick. unreasonable. <laughs> he, he was just. He was a dick. I mean, it was easily avoidable if he had been such a prick. Yeah, yeah, but it's less like. <laughs> so some sometimes that's all it is. I'll say. Yeah, I sometimes mean, okay, just, sure. A character is a piece of shit. Maybe this could have been avoided if he didn't want a hundred of his soldiers l- lounging around the castle. But fuck, that's unreasonable. He needs a hundred soldiers. <laughs> What are you supposed to do? Just not have a hundred guys roll roll around with you, squatting out? Yeah, man. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. I don't love this play as a whole, but I really like Yago as a villain, just because he's so single-minded in destroying Othello and really doesn't care about much else. That appeals. Yeah. To no. Me. Yeah. He. He has a fucking plan, and he sticks to that plan. And he has a good soliloquy and, along the way. And it's not like a plan that leads anywhere. Like, I like the uh, the talk he has with Othello about, like, people who steal something from someone else that doesn't, like, their reputation, that doesn't help them at all. It's like, yep, that's him. <laughs> that's Iago. He's just, like, out. He's not actually... He, like, briefly talks about like how he wishes he had Othello's job, but um, that's not really his focus. It doesn't seem like it's yeah. more about destroying Othello. Yeah. It's like the thing. He's just a yeah. jerk. And it's well, like, it makes him not a great character, but it makes him a great villain. But Othello didn't promote him. So really he had it coming. Sure. That sounds like, <laughs> like the correlation that Iago can string to whatever he's doing. Basically, yeah. Like, like it's not about. It, it really isn't about. I don't think any reason he's doing this. He's just gonna fucking do it because mm-hmm. fuck that guy. I like and you know. It's just it's a good story to have where your hero's just got to deal with someone who just says fuck them. Because a lot of times, even if someone doesn't like you and they have a reason, like you don't fucking know what it is. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, or um, like the way, or if you get fucked over in the world, it's just you know, such that's shit life, baby. Yeah, that's why the Greek gods were such good gods. Because it's like, yeah, fucking life is fucked and shit just happens. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's, uh... <laughs> so, is there, like... 
I'm, I'm trying to find the best way to phrase this question or comment. I don't know what it's going to come out as yet. Mm-hmm. It doesn't seem like there's only <laughs> there's only one instance that I can think of in the play where Othello being black even matters at all. It only matters really for people insulting him occasionally. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I was thinking of like when he first assumes that Desdemona has cheated on him and he's like one of the reasons that he thinks it might be is because he's black other mm-hmm. than that i don't know i there's a, i mean there's like undertones of stuff like mm-hmm. her father being so upset his daughter's married off yeah with him yeah yeah i guess that whole bit where it's like you use charms and potions yeah and if like again if you wanted to you could read more into Yago's hatred of him but like I don't yeah I don't no there's I don't think there's anything interesting or anything I don't it's not interesting and I don't think there's much to like you'd be really reaching cuz Iago is never yeah. like I mean about no, I what about what interpret what reading and interpretation of Shakespeare goes on that doesn't involve so, some stretching then the way people write it, the amount of stuff people have written about Shakespeare I mean that's you know that's literary analysis at large, uh-huh. like, uh-huh. the amount, uh, what really started turning my grades around in my English classes is realizing that I even, like, it feels like I'm just shooting bullshit out my ass, but that's what it is. And then I got good grades. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, this is stupid. I'll just take this, this dumb one-off line and I'll write a page about it. A plus. Yep. Okay, uh-huh. I guess this is what I'm doing now. Mm-hmm. Gotta stretch. Got to fill fill space. <laughs> Take a small thing and make a lot out of it. It's what it is. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I don't know. Sometimes it's fine. I I think yeah, I don't love it. <laughs> it's it's and yeah, like like you said with Shakespeare, it's like especially bad. Yeah, because. Fucking a lot of more has been written about Shakespeare like manifoldly than Shakespeare wrote. Oh, it's oh, there's just yeah. When you try to find something new to say about it, you fucking have to stretch. It's the only fucking way. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that was. A... I remember. Yeah, writing that King Lear paper just like because I hate doing like. <laughs> the exact same thing that's been researched to death, and that was kind of my problem in the end, was like, I can't do anything new. I don't think I actually can do anything new with Shakespeare. Partially because mm-hmm. I'm drastically unqualified <laughs> to do that. Yeah. I mean, you could just make something up whole cloth. I guess. That really doesn't make sense. I think you could... There might be an angle you could find that, that way. But yeah. Other than that, I mean, it's a lot okay. easier to draw. It's a lot easier to like stretch some analogies out with Othello if you like were it. You know, he's black, and if you are on a boat, there's a lot of stuff to play <laughs> with there. But when he's not, you can't really stretch it that far. See, that's that's the paper. These. What if Othello? <laughs> <on a boat? laughs> I mean, <laughs> maybe I should. <laughs> I could write like a bullshit paper, like examining in depth how exact, like what exact amount the play would be improved if it took place on a boat, uh-huh. and what metaphors you could draw out if it had been on a boat. <laughs> you don't write because I mean, obviously, it's oh. not on a boat, so you can't just say oh, all the boat metaphors in Othello. Yeah. But if you went, what if it were on a boat, and then you could write about the boat metaphors? Yeah. Huh? Huh? I mean that's a that's a paper that I would happily write as a one off, not well <laughs> as a joke to like the professor because he was a pretty chill guy, and like I don't know we're going through our university is going through a lot of shit and he didn't explicitly <laughs> encourage us to burn down buildings but he did not <laughs> he did not sound like he would uh, do anything about it if he saw some students from the English department rolling around with a can of gas and some lighters. He apparently was very enthusiastic about the protesting during Vietnam. 
<laughs> gotcha. It's been trying to sense. chase that high ever since, I guess. Mm. So yeah, Yago's pretty great. You know, for a I, as a character, <laughs> yeah, as a character to hate, yeah, oh. as a dick. I, I mean, again, I don't even think he's a, as a villain because yeah, he doesn't really have character motivation or an arc. He's just there, and he move. He's like the plot of the play, basically in human form. Mm-hmm. But it's it still works because it's just about that singular vision and hatred. It's focused. I like focused characters. Yeah, focused things in fiction because I think it works. Like I think if you actually took the time to make. Yag- give a Yago a more human motivation or something or make him more complicated I think he would be less interesting which I think is like contrary to yeah. the way a lot of other a lot of other characters work mm-hmm. yeah I could see that I mean yeah he's he's just it's it's hard to imagine <laughs> a different Yago because he's mm-hmm. he's so yeah. good at that role like I mean, I guess if you do, like, the more human aspect, you have him also be upset that he caused this whole mess after everything. Well, that's dumb. See it through. Yeah. Don't do it at all, you know? He knew what was going to happen. Yeah. Especially Uh, after he started (laughs) stabbing people. Yeah, the way he ends in this story with just like, yeah, you you know what I'm about. I'm done. (laughs) Just like I will never talk again. This is a little, this is a little weird, Yago. But uh, you know, with him being more plot than uh, person, it makes sense to me that like, yeah, I did the thing I needed to do. GG boys. What is your what is your like your your mental image of Yago like? Like what is he? Lo- just loose physical description. Um, I don't know. A little, a little pompous, a little svelte, maybe. Presentable. See, you know, yeah, piece yeah, of garbage. yeah, garbage. <laughs> See, I'm imagining like it, uh, for some reason, well kept. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not like yeah. Certainly not like a grungy. You know, I don't imagine him as like. Igor, yeah. fucking with a hump. Mm-hmm. I'm imagining like, for some reason, like the, I don't know the proper term for it, like the pointy little like beard, tiny pointy beard with like, you know, a little accompanying mustache and stuff, mm. like that that super stereotypical image. I don't know why, uh huh. But I'm like, it's gonna be someone. And in case we're wondering, King Lear is exclusively, uh, what's his name from Lord of the Rings? Theoden? King Theoden? Gotcha. Yeah. Don't know why. They both have king. There, there's king. And that, you know, all kings are alike, man. Wow. Not all kings, man. Not, <laughs> not all kings. Oh. Yeah. I don't know. I just thought of that. It's interesting. Meanwhile, I don't really imagine anyone else in the play. <laughs> like, they're there. But, yeah, Iago is definitely the most yeah. memorable. I could see someone also thinking of, like, uh, Iago looking like Wormtongue, but that's not what he looks like to me. Sure. Yeah, I yeah. Could see I could someone thinking he just looks, like, all greasy-haired and slimy. Mm-hmm. But, uh, not I could the slip- image I get. I could slip him into that role, yeah. And I mean, they're... I mean, he is like the evil vizier. Yeah, they're basically. like... I was gonna say, yeah, they're the same character as, in essence. <laughs> Clearly, just make him Jafar from Aladdin, <laughs> and... <laughs> <laughs> the talking... Good. The talking parrot could accompany him. And they're exactly. on a boat. Imagine... <laughs> Pieces continue to come together. Uh, 
Disney's Aladdin's Othello. <laughs> Disney, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. You know Disney. They gotta be careful with their black characters. Ever since Song of the South. I mean, that has, yeah. I didn't know how I bad know. They're it like, was. <laughs> you didn't know how bad it was? We it's pretty it. bad. We watched it in my Southern Lit class. It's pretty bad. Yeah, man. Ooh. Like, there are less egregious examples of the magical black man. And then there's the Song, Song of the, of the South. South. Yeah. It's rough. <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I think I'm not. I'm trying to remember when we went through this in my class. I don't even know that I made that like connection with the early stuff with like the charms and potions and whatever, with like Othello being mm-hmm. black. And then yeah, because yeah. in my Southern Lit class, there's a lot of that like super. <laughs> I mean, it's Southern Lit. Uh, there's a lot of super racist shit, as it turns out. Um. Mm-hmm. Like old Southern lit, oh, I should clarify. You think? Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm shocked. I don't, I don't want to. I don't want to be like, yeah, you know, Southerners, 2018, still pumping out that racist. I mean, literature. old books. Yeah, like, yeah, a lot of, so many. But a lot of you my know, favorite is oh, yeah. fucking the one that like got me that was shot was um. So I need to set this up a little. So I'm a big fan of the. <laughs> Humphrey Bogart movie to have and have not. Mm -hmm. And the thing about that movie is it's based in very strong quotation marks on an Ernest Hemingway novel. Oh, no. But it only has, like, two scenes from the Hemingway novel, and the rest of it is sort of written to be, like, Casablanca 2. Just, like, another Casablanca. It's more a ripoff of Casablanca that also stars Humphrey Bogart than it is based on that book. But then I read that book because I was curious, and... uh, that book uses the N word so many times. Yeah. It's like oppressive. Like, I thought I had a stomach for terrible shit, and then I read that, like, yeah, it's just fuck. This is too much. This is, ugh. Man. It's a lot. It's a lot. Also, that book is just, like, about terrible, unhappy people. Mm-hmm. And it's miserable. I'm trying to think. It's uh... such a fun movie. The movie was also, it was written by William Faulkner, basically. Okay. <laughs> Who hated Hemingway. <laughs> like, him and Hemingway hated each other, which is also a funny detail. I can't remember what, uh, I think part of it was a, I think it was turned into a movie. I can't remember the title of the book or what it was. It's on the, it's on the tip of my tongue. It's not Their Eyes Were Watching God. It's certainly not A Streetcar Named Desire. It is not Wise Blood. I don't know. I don't know. But basically it paints uh, Abe Lincoln as sympathizing with the South and also kind of being one of the sparks that started the KKK. It was a thing. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Yeah. I don't know, man. I think it's weird. But yeah, then one of them was just about... One of the short stories we read was about... um, uh-huh. Uh huh. Someone be- with like voodoo stuff, basically, like your your caricature of an old black woman, like causing voodoo on this plantation, and this guy yeah. has to. It's not necessarily bad. It's not like she's cursing it really, but mm-hmm. you know, just general voodoo. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. after doing that, and then going back to the fellow, I was like, oh. <laughs> Charms. Okay, yeah, yeah. no, that's that's kind of racist. Like for uh-huh. Barbiz, whatever the guy. I mean, name yeah, is. what it's what like yeah, the racism yeah. is that ingrained in everything. Like even stuff that's not racist is racist just by trope carry tropes carrying on and stuff. It's just like exudes through this the material through life. It's bad. The world is a bad place. Ah, oh, the world's shit, dude. <laughs> it's my conclusion. <laughs> it's my, and that's why Iago's great because he's terrible and simple. 
and the world is terrible and complicated. So there's some catharsis there. Yeah, no, he's, it's definitely not like there's some big fucking scheme to his plan. Well, I mean, okay, there is a scheme, but like, it's not like there's some sort of weird cause or anything behind it. He just yeah. hates a guy. He just hates a guy, and he's willing to fuck over whoever he needs to to also fuck over Othello. I guess he really doesn't care about anyone. Like, there's the promotion thing, but there's also, like, he thinks that Othello may have slept with his wife. I guess that... That doesn't seem like a thing that would have happened. That really seems like <laughs> it might be one of the few, if not the only, points where you could, like, call out Iago for maybe being racist. Because, like, mm. yeah, there is nothing that points to that. There's nothing that indicates that. And it's, yeah. Like, certainly not in the way those two interact. No. And I think I think if he actually would have slept with her, his wife is Amelia, right? Amelia? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, For some reason, I was getting Amelia and Bianca confused. But... I think if that would have actually happened, it probably would have been mentioned in their dialogue. Just thinking about Shakespeare, I feel like it would have been... Someone would have mentioned it or something, or there would have been more of a hint, but there's just not. They're just not. Just not there. What if... (laughs) What if Shakespeare... A new series where you just take things that definitely aren't true in Shakespeare and talk about like what if that were the case? <laughs> we had a we had a similar discussion in my Chaucer class, except because there's the one uh, the nun yeah the nun priest's tale yeah the nun priest's mm-hmm. tale where it's about it's like chickens <laughs> are the characters. Someone was like, "What if Ch- what if Canterbury Tales, but all chickens?" You know, <laughs> sounds like a good comic book. <laughs> Fuck it, of course. Ah, <laughs> uh, all right. So, in what in what year did Avengers come out with their chicken <laughs> comic where everybody's a little clucker? I don't think. They've done everyone in the universe becomes chickens. They've done everyone becomes apes in both worlds. Great. But, or everyone is apes, I guess, was the Marvel version. That's so weird. Why? What's the purpose? (laughs) Okay, so you know how zombies are popular. Uh What if instead of zombies, apes? Oh dear. I think is the motivating cuz Marvel Apes happened after Marvel Zombies became popular and they did all these zombie alternate covers that sold well. And yeah. their follow-up to that was then what if everyone's an ape? Oh no. Marvel Apes. Um but the great thing about the Marvel Apes comic is that it's also actually what if they were vampires too? <laughs> So they're, so they're vampires and apes. <laughs> yes. Ugh. That's the twist. Ugh. It's so good. That... Mm, was it... Was it even, like, around the time of, like, Planet of the Apes? Were they cashing in on that? Or was it just, fuck it, apes? No. This is... Amazing. Like, early 2000s. Oh, God! That recently... Oh no! It was 2008. Holy fuck! <laughs> that was Marvel Apes. <laughs> That's so much more recent. I was thinking like 70s or 60s or some bullshit or nah, like man. 80s. Or, I don't know. Fuck! It was 2008. Yeah, man. Oh my god! That alt cover business, dude. Jesus. <laughs> This is a well written four issue or five issue comic. Because it was four issues and then they had a zero issue. And then they did follow ups. The best follow up was about the amazing spider monkey. It was a good it's a good time. Amazing spider monkey. 
Yeah, man. Isn't that an actual species of monkey? Do they use a spider monkey? No. He's just a monkey who's a spider man. Well, they fucked up. <laughs> it's right there. It's sitting right there on the table. Is that? I'm pretty sure. Spider monkey. Yeah, it's definitely a species of monkey. Wow. It's right there, and I just didn't even take it. I think he does look like a spider monkey. Okay. Now that I'm looking at it. I mean, as think, long as... Oh, eh, a little bit. He's not fully. <laughs> he's he's fairly spider monkey-ish. He has that curled tail. Yeah. Because, you know, every primate with a curled tail is a spider monkey, apparently. Yeah. You heard it from Homer, not, not me. From not all spider rather. monkeys. Not all spider monkeys. Here. Yeah, that's uh, not at all what I was picturing, but okay. Uh huh. That is. Yeah, that's something. So, the Marvel Apes universe, they brutally murder all their supervillains, and Spider Monkey realizes maybe that's not great. Maybe we shouldn't just murder people. So, like, do all of the ape characters, like, have a... Do they change? Like, do they undergo, like, that... What have we been doing to ourselves? What have we become? No. Then they all try to kill him, basically. Great. <laughs> uh, and they want to invade the real world to kill... To, to give order to it. Or, Wait, or the our real... world, rather. The... Our world. The main Marvel Universe. Oh, so they're, they're like human, aware humans of it. Humans. Yeah. Okay. They like become aware of it through the, through the plot. Because our main character, the main character is of the story is of the original Marvel Apes is the Gibbon, who is an ape based supervillain. Okay. In that story is reformed, and he ends up in the world of the Marvel Apes, where everyone is an ape or a monkey. And then he thinks it's great because he's like normal here. And then he finds out they're all murderers, and also some of them are vampires. <laughs> oh my god! Comics are great. Comics are something, but I mean, this is no really. This is no different than the works of Shakespeare, when the char the lead characters start realizing that they're in a play, and yeah. they have to go to other plays and assemble the Shakespeare Avengers. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so good uh, trademark me 2018 don't steal <laughs> you can give me money for the movie rights though <laughs> who we got on our roster we got Othello we got, uh, we got King Lear we got King Lear naturally um, probably Romeo no got Juliet me. for sure not Romeo? Not Romeo. But I was thinking Fuck like Romeo, Romeo. I was thinking like Romeo and Mercutio could have like a <laughs> Iron Man uh guy whose actor changed partway through sort of relationship. <laughs> nah. Mm. Horatio can be there too. Okay. Well that's fine then. <laughs> Where does the bear come in? <laughs> Is that like their mascot? I mean, yes, it, at some point the bear has to chase someone out of the movie and they just never come back, clearly. <laughs> They're just gone. It's like... Uh, They're just gone. It's like, what's his name from uh, The Room? <laughs> just gets chased yeah. off by that bear. We never see him again. You just never see him again. Fans can wonder about it forever. It'll be big among the cult following. Literary professors will talk about it for years. About the symbolism. <laughs> I still like... The bear is great. I'm still a huge fan of whatever the hell thing it was. And it's... Uh, I can't even remember the name at all. I know we talked about it before. But when the dude just exits into Trunk. Back into Trunk. Because mm -hmm. he emerged from the Trunk. Yeah, man. That's just good staging. It's great staging. You don't want to 
If you jump into a building through a window, you don't want to jump out through another window. Unless it's for a joke. <laughs> it's just more efficient staging. You don't have to break another mirror. I mean, it You're depends. on a show. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair, I guess. It's just the practicality of the stage is what this is about. <laughs> I mean, that's, uh... <laughs> is, the, is it is it just called Cleopatra? No. Yes, Cleopatra and whatever. What? What what the one with Cleopatra and Mark Antony? The the play. Shakespeare. Mm. Is it just like Antony and Cleopatra or something? Mark Antony and Cleopatra? I, I guess. Andrew and Mark I don't. I don't, I don't know. know. It's. I mean, it's. It's with those two, and there's like a thousand scene changes. Like, we, we're here, we're in Egypt, and we're doing stuff, and we're going to have a scene change going back to uh to Greece or Rome or whatever the hell. This scene is exactly two lines, and we flip back to Egypt. <laughs> Yeah. It's Antony and, and Cleopatra. Antony and Cleopatra. I remember now. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I just remember, like, our professor talking about how there's only... We didn't, we can't even know how good the plays of it are because there hasn't been enough to, like, have a wide <laughs> judgment because nobody wants to deal with that shit. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a pain in the ass. It doesn't sound... I mean... If I were... I would say go for minimalism. Mm-hmm. I feel like you could probably pull it off, but... uh I mean, if you're going to do it, you should... It's also like, that. I guess that defeats the purpose of putting that one on. Like, the purpose of putting it on is all these dumb scene changes at that point, right? It'd be a good, like... It'd be a good cartoon, though. Then you just gotta draw the scenes. <laughs> that animation budget, though. I don't, I mean, I'm trying to think if the, <laughs> if a Shakespeare cartoon would be like a fucking B-movie knockoff and have zero budget at all, or if it would actually be something that someone would try to produce. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like it would be a B-budget thing. Because cartoons are for kids, and obviously Shakespeare is for adults, so those are just not markets that work together. Now, if you gave me anime, oh Shakespeare, no, fuck, we got we got there. Uh, then it wouldn't be Shakespeare anymore. It would be <sighs> Romeo x Juliet, which is a thing that exists. God damn it. It, does it follow the like okay Not really. how much okay i was gonna ask like how much <laughs> anime and how much shakespeare are we talking like, like what's the ratio uh, here juliet sword fighting i think okay, she's so like not a, very shakespeare. i think she's like a you know robin hood type character i don't remember i didn't finish that series I wonder I why. Watch a little bit. I liked it on on the idea. the The execution left me a little wanting. I, <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, I don't know. I I kind of have actually been in the mood. Like when I was reading through Othello for this, I've. It'd be kind of nice to have more of, like, I can't even remember the name of it. I guess just Romeo and Juliet from the 90s or whatever with Leonardo DiCaprio and it's modern day. Mm -hmm. I would enjoy something like that. Maybe done a little bit better, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I don't like that movie, so I don't have a strong opinion on that one. I like Mercutio in it. He was cool. Everything else is meh. 
Yeah, I just don't like the way it's shot or it's paced. So that's oh, a pretty. It's, it's been way too long for me to comment on that. I don't. I don't like its sense of style, and it's mostly style. So that's kind of a deal breaker. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I. I think if I if they if if I'm getting another movie like that in Magical Christmas Land, I I don't know that I'd want them to stick to the exact dialogue. Because I get I get how it's good, but also I feel like it limits you a lot with the rest of the movie. I'm cool with making an original story that's inspired by a Shakespeare play, but if you're doing Shakespeare, do Shakespeare. Fair enough. Like like there's if you're gonna I'd rather you changed more if you're gonna do just sort of a, your, uh, an original take on that idea like the movie Stoker which is what if Hamlet was a girl and wanted to fuck Claudius which one's Claudius again uh, the one who kills Hamlet's father and right. marries his mother okay so his uncle yeah his yeah. uncle uh -huh. I'm bad with names man Yeah, at least in the <laughs> I mean, I won't, okay, we, we're not gonna, I'm not gonna get into it too much, but I got through that part in the Iliad where it's just like five pages of names. That was yeah. a lot of names, man. It was, it was a lot of names. Old Testament shit. Yeah, man. <laughs> Look, you gotta keep a record. Yeah, no, all the books. I was like, do I need to get a fucking pen out? Like, No, you don't need to know no, any of that. No. <laughs> it's just the I answer. Am. The yeah. answer is, oh, it's the five pages of boat names, Skip. That's the correct answer. I, like, I skimmed because some of it, there was still like some good, some juicy bits, but uh -huh. <laughs> it was a lot. I don't know. It's a lot, yeah. No. The Iliad is not um, tight. It's not a tight narrative. No. <laughs> they re Do they reuse some sh some shit? It seems like remember. when they were, I think they do. Mm. There was like a sacrifice. I mean, I know there's, I know there's a lot of it. repetition. Just yeah, yeah. You know, when you have an oral story, repetition is always good. So it, that's that's totally possible. Yeah, there was like there's two a instances of, of a sacrifice, and they repeat the same like first six lines, and then it changes mm -hmm. a little. Yeah. I mean, that sounds like a thing that would happen. Yeah. Also, these. These podcasts have been fucking great for scoring points with my teachers. <laughs> <laughs> I like a roll in. I was reading. I was reading uh, Tolkien's Beowulf because it, it's Tolkien and it's Beowulf, you know, uh -huh. and it's me. So I'm I'm in. I read it, and my professor's like, "Oh man, like that's you know whatever that looks awesome," but it's a good read. Blah blah. blah. And then I roll in like the next week, and I got a fellow. Like prepping for this, <laughs> and uh -huh. he's like, "Oh, wow!" And he's like talking to me about shit, and then I roll in now with the Iliad, and he's just <laughs> like he referenced it in class because he said something about like, uh, what book we were to? Oh, uh, a streetcar named Desire. He said, "Whatever makeup sex between two people is like probably the greatest makeup sex of all time." And then he like noticed Iliad sitting on sitting near me. He's like, "Except for so and so in the Iliad." <laughs> Which I, had, I I haven't gotten to yet, but like, I don't know. I'm hoping to pass that class now. <laughs> really scoring those points. Happy, I'm happy reading books is helping you, Ben. <laughs> I mean, the books are also enjoyable, too. <laughs> you know, it's a nice little side <laughs> benefit. It's like that oh, side benefit. I'm though. reading. I'm reading this book for me, but also, if it comes back to me in other ways, sure, why not? Become a book slut. Just carry around books you're not even reading. See yeah, professor's classes. <laughs> <laughs> Score brownie points. True power move. I would try to be as obvious with Beowulf in my history of English class as I could, and I, I didn't get any didn't get any bites on it. 
like scooting the book like be, from out from behind the person in front of me like just nudging a little bit like reading it like upright so the title's just right there i got the cover yeah. off and everything so it's just the bailiff <laughs> and big ass letters on the spine nothing oh, see you, re- you revealed too much so i guess to leave something to the imagination you're going through old english stuff i really thought it would you know i was hoping for a home run you can't like be a, a slut about it ben most. you have to be seductive and yeah, <laughs> you have to be seductive. <laughs> I like quickly gave up in that class though. Way too many people just the whole class just a giant. Everybody's dick measuring. I know this fact about this word, or I know this thing from this language, and it's just we're, we're not even learning stuff anymore. So I didn't. <laughs> if it was any other class, I might have raised my hand and asked something about Beowulf or said something or answered something, but I just. Instead, I just read Beowulf. <laughs> Opted not to participate. Fair enough. Sometimes people are useless. It happens. Yeah. And is annoying. When you're in a class with them. <laughs> yeah. I do... I do wish I could, like, go back and... <laughs> not apologize, because I've never been the type of type of student to like take it out on the professor or whatever like i was miserable for a large portion of my shakespeare class mm-hmm. basically until that final paper mm. and obviously it's my fault i'm the one who looked at shakespeare on the thing and fucking signed up for the class mm. <laughs> it's certainly no one's fault but i want to let the professor know that like yo i'm reading shakespeare stuff like for fun now or the you I know got there. Well, fun those fat views on our podcast, you know. <laughs> yeah, our fat views. One and the same. <laughs> you know what pulls people in. <laughs> Come on. We know what the we know what the big hitters are. King Lear, got Othello. Someday with Can you hear that? Yep. A little, a little Is that a plane? F- that would be a little, yeah. A little fly boy. Getting carpet bombed. <laughs> you know, I. it's never going to happen, probably, because of where I am. But I always wonder. It always <laughs> crosses my mind. Like, what are you doing flying over my town in Wisconsin? There's no point. What are you doing? That'd be a waste of bombs. Unless they really want to someone, destroy the TG factor. Unless it's, a, unless it's someone who's in one of my classes. They know what they're doing. <laughs> it's okay. The uh, The government has a protocol for annoying people in an English class. It does? You just nuke the shit Is out it? of them. Oh, I thought it was, you know, let them continue on doing nah. that. No. Without no. repercussions. You nuke them, and then it rains. And then you get even more English majors from, from the corpses. <laughs> Send more students. It's like Yakuza Apocalypse, but instead of Yakuza Vampires, it's English major zombies. Mm. I think you've got your yourself a little indie film here. It's going to be great. <laughs> All right, write this short story and get back to me. (laughs) Can you imagine, like, a director whose films were all just, like, bangers like that? Othello on a boat, fucking Shakespeare (laughs) Avengers, English major zombies, like... (laughs) Just really find find that niche and just dig the fuck in. A man can dream, Ben. A man can dream. Maybe I'll talk to Peter. He does. He, him and Ty took a screenplay class. <laughs> what a world. What, what a, world. a world. Then you find out the shit already exists. And it's terrible. So then people won't be willing to try it again. Damn. Maybe not a fellow on a boat. I think the, that's probably the least likely out of those things. Because I feel like 
You know, there's <laughs> people always say there's seven billion people on the planet. Like you're never alone in things that you do. Like especially now that Reddit's a thing, there's always people who are like so surprised that oh, when you were driving, when you were riding in a car, when you were like six to ten or whatever you do the little running man animated like little motions with your fingers and have them jump over shit there's always someone who does that there's always someone who does this weird tick that you thought only you do mm -hmm. i don't know if anyone else has thought that othello took place on a boat entirely oh, well i've definitely seen that joke i've seen you that have? A joke before yes that, okay well they stole my idea in, okay <laughs> you're not unique in the othello on a boat thing i'll say okay. Was it a joke, sorry, or do they truly believe? Because, like, I was... I've only was seen there. it as a joke. I haven't seen okay. the truly believe, I'll say. But I I feel like other people must have. Be that dumb. Wow. Wow. <laughs> right to the core of it, huh? Not even going to soften that blow up? Nope. Damn. Fun. That's rough. Yeah, man. Whatever. It would... A great story. <laughs> Fuck off. It gets. It starts to derail. It starts to derail if you try to make it like Shakespeare, Pirates of the Caribbean. Like, there's no sense to have Iago be on a different boat. They all got to be on the same boat. They're on this journey. Yeah, man. When do they fight the Kraken? <laughs> That's probably a uh, that's probably part of Othello's backstory, like he's gotcha. telling about all of his cool adventures. And then Desdemonia is like, "Hot damn, I want to hop on that." Yeah, man, it fit in well. What if someone made the romantic comedy that was Iago and his wife falling in love and getting married? Oh no, <laughs> I feel like that would have sexual assault written all over it. <laughs> Like, think of his scheming, but then apply it to, uh, yeah. apply it to trying to get a woman. Oh dear. Uh huh. Yeah, no, that's no good. That's like, uh, what was that garbage movie on Netflix that had the wrong, they had the wrong person as the protagonist? Uh, Sarah Bergerman must no, Sarah Bergerman something something. It's a chick from another movie, and I don't know if she was the main character, and. She did well enough that then she was in, and I think both of these are Netflix originals. So you know mm. you're really you're really fucking rolling the dice on it to begin with. She's one of those girls that's like conventionally unattractive. I will say, like mm -hmm. I think in the first film they definitely were looking for someone to fill that role, and then in the second film it was kind of a it's like a kind of a chick flick. Like girl gets the guy, but the loose plot is that hot cheerleader gives ugly girl's phone number to guy trying to hit on cheerleader. Girl and cheerleader become friends after the classic, um, I'll help you with your homework if you help me with this guy. Except mm. she never tells the guy that it's her, so he thinks he's texting a hot cheerleader, which is fucked up to begin with, and I can't believe this movie got made in 2018. But then, then... They, like, start sending... The cheerleader starts going on dates with him, like, pretending that she's the ugly girl and has to, like, try to talk like her and, you know, talk about whatever smart shit that she knows nothing about. He goes in for the kiss at the end of this date by his car, and mm. ugly girl is, like, right there, and at the last, like cheerleader makes him close his eyes, and at the last second, she switches places with the ugly girl and he kisses her. How is that not serious sexual assault? And also, that is such a Iago move. <laughs> That's something that dude would do. I could, I could see it perfectly in my mind's eye. Iago I want to watch that cheerleader movie. outfit. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Goes really well with the sort of like filch from Harry Potter, uh, worm tongue <laughs> from Lord of the Rings. You know, like that Real sort of oily. guy. Yeah, real, real greasy, greasy, like gray skin, mm -hmm. sunken eyes, hot cheerleader outfit, stealing your stealing your girl. I'd watch or it. Or your man, whatever. Or your man, yeah, no judge. Whatever he can get, probably. Yeah, man. 
Look, he just needed a wife for status, probably. You know what would be you know what would be great for the whole Also he found a wife whose approach to him was like, I just need to serve him and do what he needs. <laughs> steal whatever handkerchiefs he asked me to. Yeah. You know what would be great for the uh the whole thinking Othello slept with his wife bit? If he first off, still that he only thinks that and doesn't really have tangible proof, but also if it was something that happened before he ever met his wife. <laughs> like just you know, if we're if we're in like the movie world here, just super uh-huh. like thinks that she did something. How dare she? Before she even knew he existed. I don't know. She got drunk and made out at a party once. Fucking <gasps> whore. That skank. How dare she? Yeah. Terrible. Just real bad. What if Othello but zombies, though? What if Othello but zombies? What's yeah, the uh, what's the catalyst? How does it start? The handkerchief. <laughs> the handkerchief. Oh, no. It's magic. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's got oh, an Egyptian dear. curse on it. Great. <laughs> it, they, did they call it a curse? I thought it was like a good thing, though. Or yeah, no, no, they did, no. I'm turning. I'm deciding. It's okay, a okay. That's the change. Maybe it's like a monkey's paw situation. It grants you eternal life. Well, unless you get rid of it or lose it, then it unleashes an unholy nightmare. <laughs> I could get into it. Zombie films need to really wow me. We've talked about that. Like, I'm not super into zombies, so it has to be... Yeah. I do Shakespeare zombies. I'm in. Like, English major zombies also. Fine. Could be part of Look, the same franchise, even. I'm just over here enjoying my... Uh, Scottish high school musical Christmas zombies. Thank you very much. That's not real, is it? Yeah, it is. And then the apocalypse. It's like oh. the last movie I wrote a review for in Burning Barrel. It's really good. In theaters now. I don't think you... Uh, I I remember... Okay. I think I recall you... Yeah, the zombie Christmas movie. You said nothing about Scottish High School Musical. That's... Yeah, that's, those well, are the other elements. Well, I'm disappointed that you didn't tell me before now. Okay. Could've had a ni- I could have had a nice Tuesday. <laughs> Five dollar movies. <laughs> Actually, that's probably not even playing. Central Wisconsin? Mm-mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's that's, too many. That's... There's like Planes 5 or something that's probably going down. Yeah. Also, it might not be playing anymore by the time this airs in like two months. Not that we have a backlog. <laughs> We're doing this the week of. Uh, nothing to be alarmed yes. about. This week this was recorded this was recorded as you were listening to it we did it live psych oh i don't I think like that's psych this is actually live oh i mean it wouldn't be See, any i different. thought you're using psych like not not classic <laughs> no if i was gonna do that i'd go like just full bore at like not <laughs> Uh, anyway. You can email us at saltcirclepodcast at gmail.com. Find us on Twitter at saltcirclepod. We're on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Salt Circle Podcast. You can find our episodes hosted at anchor.fm slash saltcircle. And I am on Twitter at comic panels. And I am on Twitter at bean underscore LP. It wasn't really, I don't know. We got away from Othello a lot, but there was some, there was some good bits. I had a good time. Yeah. Got those those movie ideas coming. Keep an eye out. Theaters near you.